He's almost like a League 2 player. This is what Roy Keane said about Erling Haaland after Manchester City's 0-0 draw against Arsenal a few weeks ago. And this statement has opened up a season-long debate as to whether Haaland is actually a good footballer and has got people once again questioning, is he overrated? And you'll hear stats such as the fact he has more big chances missed than anybody else in the league. And yes, that does include Darwin Nunes. Or people will bring up the fact that he might not be the most aesthetically pleasing player to watch. And some would even go as far to say that the only reason he scores goals is because City create so many chances. Well, I'm here today to see if any of these criticisms are justified or if it's just people unwilling to admit that the best striker in the world plays for Manchester City. But before we get into that, please like the video if you enjoy and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The goal is to reach 300 subscribers by the end of the year and your support is very much appreciated. Especially if you're new around here, please drop us a, um, a sub and also check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Without any further ado, let's get into whether Haaland is overrated or not. 36 Premier League goals. 52 goals in all competitions combined with 9 assists. Those were Erling Haaland's numbers last season. Absolute incredible numbers, especially when you pair it with his treble that he won with the club. It was a perfect debut season for the player. I'm pretty sure we can all agree with that. But people will now say that his second season hasn't been as good and that he is not as good of a player as he was last season. And people say that he's been figured out or he was overperforming. And yes, he might have been overperforming because those numbers that he put up were absurd, especially seen as he only played 53 games in all competitions last season. So he basically scored a goal a game because he scored, what, 52, 53 games? Basically a goal a game then, right? Okay. And people will be saying, oh, well, he's not scoring as many goals as he did last season. He's missing more chances than he did last season. He's not as good. Blah, 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 blah. So... As of right now, Haaland is sat on, I believe, 31 goals in all competitions. I'll, I'll quickly check that for you now. Yes, he is sat on 31 goals for the season with six assists, right? Which is, these are not bad numbers, especially as soon as he's only played 38 games this season. So he's still got a good goal to game ratio. And yes, obviously, of course, these numbers are not as good as they were last season. But those numbers he was putting up last season were definitely um, unsustainable and I didn't expect him to put up the exact same numbers again. So his form hasn't really fallen off a cliff like some people will say. But obviously, everybody on social media, on hit, on YouTube, whatever, likes to be hyperbolic in their opinions, right? So he's still putting up decent goal numbers. And people say, oh, he's missed the most big chances in the league. He, he's missed more than, than Nunes. Okay, let's look at the league goals. No, no, we'll look at the stats as a whole, right? So, Haaland has missed 30 big chances, right? With Darwin missing 25. Haaland has scored 20 Premier League goals, the joint top in the league. Darwin has 11. So, player misses more big chances, but he scores more goals. I would rather have Haaland's big chances missed, paired with his goals, than Darwin having five less chances missed, with nine less goals. I think I think that's quite obvious, right? I think most people would choose that. And obviously, people are again bringing up the argument, oh, City are going to regret selling Cole Palmer. Look, he's matched Haaland's goal tally. He's in better form than Haaland. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Cole Palmer's having an exceptional debut season at Chelsea. But if he stayed at City, is he taking penalties? No. Is he getting as much game time? No. Is the team built around him? No. Is he going to get as much freedom to play where he wants, when he wants? No. Is he, and again, the easiest question, is he scoring 20 goals in a City shirt in the league? No, he's not. And football is not that black and white. Just because a player is having a good season for one team doesn't mean they'll have a good season or the exact same season if you put them in another kit. There are multiple factors. Style of play, system, dressing room atmosphere, player happiness, player role. All of these things, right? Play a part. So no, again, Cole Palmer would not be putting up these numbers for City and we do not regret selling him. Is Erling Haaland the League 2 footballer? No. 
I don't think so, anyway. And if Erling Haaland has the footballing ability of a League 2 footballer, then what does that make Julian Alvarez? Because just because he's smaller and um, a bit more agile, people seem to be like, think that he's so much better on the ball than Haaland, when he's not. Haaland, in my opinion, is better on the ball and off the ball than Alvarez. Alvarez's first touch is far worse. Um, his passing's significantly worse. His movement, worse. They, they, I'd say they've got a similar level of finishing when, when it's just a one-on-one -on -one finish, they've got a similar level of finishing. Uh, probably Alvarez can cross better. That's really a, that's re crossing is all Alvarez has on Haaland. He's dribbling, passing, movement, ball control. I all say are significantly worse than Haaland. So I'd say again, his footballing ability is definitely um, made to look worse by a lot of people as a an ex basically just an excuse to slander him. Or when he's not having a good game, people can say, "Oh, well, he didn't complete." X amount of take-ons, whatever, whatever. But his hold-up play is good. His hold-up play is very good. We saw it against Arsenal last season. We saw it against Bayern Munich last season. We've seen it in countless games this season. His hold-up play is good. And especially, we look at the game against Real Madrid last week. He doesn't score a goal. But if Haaland isn't taking up the positions he was taking up, I don't think Foden scores, and I don't think Vardy all scores. Because... A lot of the time, both Tuamani and and Rudiger were focused on Haaland because you don't want to let him in behind. You don't want to let him have a sniff at goal. So if you have a striker there that is known for being dangerous in the box and you should not allow one-on-one -on -one with, your, with your keeper, of course you're going to double up on him. So as soon as those defenders double up on him, it gives people like Foden, Grealish, Doku, De Bruyne, Silva space it gives them space and again these are players you don't want to afford space and time on the ball but they have no choice so it's either allow these players space on the edge of the box and just and just hope someone can throw this body in front of the shot in front of the pass or you allow Harlem one-on-one -on -one with your goalkeeper and every time you choose the the first option every time you mark the latter option because that is the one that's most lethal but that doesn't say that the, the first option isn't lethal. And it puts you in a predicament where it's kind of a hope and pray situation. And obviously you see with games against Liverpool, uh, against Arsenal, Liverpool defended so, so well. Arsenal defended so, so well. So it, it nullifies his goal scoring and it makes his off the ball movement look less impressive because no one's scored a goal. But just because no one scored doesn't mean he hasn't played well. A defender can mark a defender can mark a striker out of the game, but the striker can still have a good game. It just depends on if the striker is willing to drag that defender around with him or if he's just gonna throw a strop and be like, I'm not getting the ball, I might as well just stand here. Because if Haaland stands stationary and lets Saliba, Gabriel Van Dijk mark him out of the game, then yes, he's not going to have an impact on the game. But if he's always moving and making Saliba be on his toes, but Saliba still doesn't let him get a sniff of goal, he's had a positive impact on that game, especially if that goal comes, if a goal comes from Saliba, Gabriel, or whoever, whoever the centre back of your choice is, from them being out of position. And that's the way I see it. Things aren't just as black, black and white. You can impact a game by not touching the ball. You can impact a game by not getting a goal and an assist. And I think Grealish in a City um, shirt is, is definitely the best example. He slows down the game. He, he makes sure we keep control. He wins fouls um, to break up the play when, when things might not be going in our favour. And we just don't get roped into as many basketball end-to-end -end games when Grealish is on the pitch. But for people that don't watch City and people that don't watch City games, Grealish isn't a good player because he doesn't get the goals or the assists, but his role is is very crucial um, to how the team plays. And again, if you actually watch football without a bias, because, you know, even sometimes I'll watch a Saka game, for example, right? And he won't play particularly well. 
And then a bit of bias will creep in because of the comparisons to Foden. And I'll instantly go, oh, this guy's terrible. But then if I break out of that mindset and, and watch the game with a neutral point of view, I, I would 100% have a different opinion of, of, of his performance. But because people watch football with bias, it's easy to jump to these sort of conclusions when obviously when there's bias involved and they won't look at the bigger picture and that's again that's what happens in a lot of these um is Haaland good Foden versus Saka debates Saliba Diaz Van Dijk debates it's what happens in a lot of these debates people will not watch the game properly they'll just look out for mistakes and shortcomings in people's games and obviously that's fine you you can watch football however you want but I'm just saying that a lot of these conversations come around from people looking out for mistakes and it, it's also shown in how popular hate watching other teams that teams you don't like has become you see that a lot of people do hate watches now me included mate i i love a good hate watch on liverpool but um obviously people just look for the negatives um in players and teams just so they can run their agenda and that's where a lot of these obviously discourses start and i feel like the final thing i have to say on the Haaland front is yes he's not having as good a season as he did last season but he's been injured for a lot of this season well not a lot but like he was injured for a good two months in a row um, compared to the lack of injuries he picked up last season so obviously he's played less games been available for less games as well so of, of course he's going to have less um, less goals less assists I would be very very concerned if after missing two months um worth of games through injury he had better numbers than he did last season but that's again that's all i i really have to say on it let me know down below if you think that harlan's overrated if you think harlan has the ability of a league two footballer or you think that it's just people exaggerating to to get their their clips that their, their viral tweets or their their you know quote in the headline let me know in the comments down below. Please like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel with a, and click the bell notification so you are notified every time that I go live and upload a new video. Like I said at the start of the video, the goal is 300 subscribers by the end of the year. I've been Nathan and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Shut down cases, they belly dots to the cartsy faces, chasing, chasing the bad guy, chasing. You don't wanna be the one like Ace and like GT, trying to turn them out, wasted. Aye, tell a bad bitch, come break it, break it. Body come mad, come shake it, shake them. Get back to the basics, basics, bro, down, shut down cases. They belly dots to the cartsy